Hey, you little cutie idiot. Yes, you over there on the other side of the screen. I'm Dave Makes Noises, here today to play sorrowful songs on the sweet strings of your soul. So get your tissues ready and brace for tragedy. As we ask the sorcerer remains of Mr. Ripper, what is the coolest backstory you made for your sorcerer? Part one. Back when I first started playing D&D, the second character I ever made was a dragonborn wild mage sorcerer named Riven. He wasn't all that strong and was short for a dragonborn, yet due to his wild magic, he was a criminal enforcer. Before he was born, his father was so desperate to have a child that he sought a hag to deal with his sterility. She gave him a potion that once drank would allow him to sire a child, but unknown to him, the potion would cause the child to be weak, yet at the same time it would dredge up the latent magic in their bloodline, causing them to be unstable. Riven's father became abusive as he grew once Riven began his training. Riven always failed, and his father's frustration eventually led to him beating Riven. This came to a head one day when Riven's father was giving Riven an especially brutal beating. Unconsciously defending himself, Riven lashed out at his father with his latent magic. After this, he would be abandoned in a distant city. Riven lived on the streets for a couple of months, but eventually while pickpocketing, he was caught by the leader of a small criminal organization. Noticing the boy's magic, the dwarf took Riven in, training him to use his magic as an enforcer for the organization. Riven was content with this job, given respect, a home, and three meals a day, but it came to an end when dealing with a client. Riven and his partner were attacked. Riven was the only one in the aftermath left alive. The guards were called and Riven was arrested on the spot, only to be drafted by the guards due to a shortage of men. That's as far as his story went as the campaign fizzled out thanks to the beer plague. I made a storm sorcerer tempest domain cleric who was a fisherman and took trips overseas to sell his catches and kept them well preserved for freshness. His ship was attacked by a sea monster so powerful that it was manipulating the weather around the ship, causing lightning strikes and hail. As all this was going on, the character was praying to his god for his and his crewmates' survival. His god answered his prayer, telling him he could not save everyone directly. However, he could grant him the power to do it. Character accepts and is then blasted by a large lightning bolt from the sky. He then blacks out on a beach not very familiar to him. With some stuff from the ship, such as supplies and weapons and some parts from the ship. He had no memory of what happened after the appearance of his god, but he did know he had new powers, and camped on the beach until he managed to find enough food and purified water to be able to last him a while. He then set off to explore the land, and if there is civilization, he could earn money to buy a ship to head home to his family and learn what happened to his crew and the monster. I made a 12-year-old sorcerer with draconic ancestry. After talking with my DM, we agreed that she was a normal human girl living in a cold-ass village with a white dragon problem. To stop it from decimating the local farm animal population, the village secretly sacrificed someone to it each year. While well, the time comes and the dragon tries to do her in with its ice weapon, but it doesn't work. She's unfazed. Seeing this miraculous event from afar, Juron, the dragon slayer, swoops in to rescue her, slicing into the dragon just a bit and splashing her with its blood. Through an adventure to stop the same dragon from ruining a city, the dragon calls her sister. Turns out an ancient wizard turned into and became a white dragon, accidentally producing a line of tainted offspring, and the two were actually related. This was a huge surprise for me, who thought she got her power from his blood that day. So anyway, we used the city to bombard him with fireballs, and our monks sliced open his neck for the killing blow. Good times. I had a sorcerer who was once a general of Asmodeus during the Blood War. While a powerful archdevil in his own right, he did something rather unusual for a devil. He had a strict honor code that he never deviated from. This eventually got him banished from the Hells after he refused to kill an unconscious demon lord. No honor in an assassination, and he wound up on the mortal plane as a tiefling, with only the bare minimum of his power remaining. During his time amongst the mortals, his respect for them grew, and as he was no longer a true devil, it allowed his morality to shift, making him a more neutral aligned character. Now his goal is to return to Hell to kill Asmodeus, not out of vengeance, but to prove that being an archdevil had nothing to do with his strength. I once played a high elf shadow sorcerer named Aliorissa Cianadel Lockwood, Ella. 
She was the firstborn child of the Lockwood family, a prominent noble family. And when she was born, the room was covered in a layer of ice, an omen of the dark, shadowy powers at her fingertips. The irises of her eyes looked like rolling purple clouds, her hair jet black. All of her being stood out as unnatural in the eyes of her parents. After 25 years of living with them and being treated more like a servant than a daughter, she was excommunicated from the family and forced to live on the streets. By some miracle, a judge took pity on her after she was falsely accused of assaulting a man in protest of some laws that were enacted, a protest she neither heard about nor attended. She took the last name Cianadel from the judge as a show of thanks. After many years, she did get back at her family, interrupting them during their announcement that the eldest of her four younger siblings would be the next heir to their trade empire, and announcing that she still lived. Her parents died when a massive insurrection of abyssal energy corrupted the islands they were living at, leaving Ella with saving her two younger brothers, her younger sister, and her 10-day-old infant sister. Now she lives as the duchess of a newly formed mining town, with all of her siblings working in the political landscape of her home. When I was 10, I had a DM who ran, if you can roll for it, you can do it, no questions asked. I ran my first ever character, a half mage, half demon kind of thing, and we were fighting a large group of skeletons, so I decided it would be good to go full on demon mode, but I rolled a four and ended up having a flashback to the times where I had destroyed towns without reason through sheer anger, and at that moment went full-on demon and accidentally killed everyone and the cave we were in. By everyone, I mean the party, the skelly boys, and even a teammate's mount, and that's where we ended the campaign. Not mine, but a PC of mine. The sorcerer was bullied as a child by others because he had no friends and wanted to be a wizard, but he wasn't that smart. So one day he was struck by lightning, becoming a storm sorcerer. With his new powers, he fought back and wasn't bullied again. But when he was 22, his village was captured as well as everyone but himself. He went into the mountains and made a cabin where he lived and trained for 10 years so he could take back the village and save his family. Not a sorcerer main, but a story from a game I'm in. When we started the game, the PC was a warlock terrified of his patron. And in short, the party on a need for adventure promised to help this dude stop some cultists from breaking the chain to help release an evil dragon. We all failed and got cursed by said dragon to either do as she asks or perish in a year. Time passed with us gathering the needed material to break the curse when the warlock decided to break his pact with his patron because he was super scary. Coincidentally, he also decided to dream with the dude that we tried to help. Turns out, he's a dragon. And not just that, but the evil dragon's brother who's trying to stop what could turn into his sister's reign of terror. Not fully sure what happened in the dream as it happened privately, but he made a deal with the dragon and became a draconic sorcerer. My first character was a tiefling wild mage who was abandoned by his parents and grew up on the street scamming people with the cup game in order to get by. He was then kidnapped by pirates and used as an infiltrator. He had a false identity from the charlatan background. After a raid, he found a ring of three wishes, which he used to wish for magic powers, which completely fried his brain, revenge on the pirates, which caused the entire fleet to go up in flames, and then wished to escape, which teleported him to the party's location. I plan to play him again sometime. I'm currently playing a tiefling wild magic sorcerer. He was born into a noble family in charge of Waterfield, a human noble family. Of course, having a tiefling child in a human family leads to a bad reputation, so his family kept him secret his entire life. His parents barely cared about him, and his siblings hated him, both because of what he is and because of his magical abilities. The reason for his magic and his appearance is because his mother wore a necklace containing a crystal that harnesses the power of the abyss while she was pregnant with him. His magic manifests as rainbow-colored flames, and his metamagic is basically him hoping the spell does what he wants it to. Well, with my sorcerer, it is a bit of a long story, but here goes. My sorcerer started out as a tiefling commoner in a homebrewed world where tieflings were the new human, along with other races being swapped for their less popular cousins. Orcs were common soldiers, humans were outcasts, beholders and liches were very popular, things like that. My character's name was Erebus, mostly because it sounded cool and generally had a pretty healthy childhood in a world that was much like our own. However, the day he found his powers was the worst 
of his life. Erebus and his best friend were walking home when suddenly a group of human insurgents attacked the town they lived in. Erebus rushed home to find his home in flames and his family burnt to ashes. He ran to go find his friend, who he left behind, and finally found them. They tried to escape, but his friend was shot in the back by one of the humans. Angry and heartbroken, Erebus' powers awakened, and he was able to wipe out the entirety of the human rebellion. However, because he was new to this power, and it was overwhelmingly powerful, his soul was split into billions of pieces. His body was still at his home, laying in the dirt, but pieces of his magic and psyche were scattered throughout the dimensions, giving birth to alternate Erebus. Each one was only a fragment of the original, and tended to have defects thanks to this. Low strength score that decreased every four levels, a constant state of exhaustion, etc. Along with a variety of skills, whether it's the draconic line, or the shadow magic line, or whatever. Now all of these Erebuses live in their respective worlds, each trying to find a cure for their ailment and a way to become whole again, while the original body stays in the home dimension in a coma. Hello fellow consciousness occupied meat being and thank you for attuning your cosmic meat antenna to this here video. I don't know who needs to hear this, but we might see the practical application of faster than light travel in this lifetime and if that doesn't fill you with a sense of childlike wonder, perhaps a new gaming group of D&D friends from Mr. Ripper's group finder discord server will. Haha, <laughs> link is in the description. If you have a story you think would make a great Mr. Ripper video, please submit it to our official subreddit, r slash Mr. Ripper. If you'd like to hear some stories live with soothing and very classy live piano improvisation from yours truly, join us on a Sunday stream at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. GMT over at twitch.tv slash Mr. Ripper stream. If you'd like to watch myself and the gang play some Dungeons and Dragons, feel free to tune in every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific over at twitch.tv slash fire underscore n underscore dice. If you want more of me for whatever reason, you can find my goofy behind us on TikTok at Dave Makes Noises, often found making music and music jokes. Go tell somebody you love that you love them. I love you. Got him. We all love you here at Rip Daddy's house. Please sub for Nat 20s. Ring the bell so you can flex how early you are when the videos drop. Thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.